In this video, I'm going to upgrade my Dig Uno to a Dig Quad controller. My name is Dave, and I am another nerdy Canuck. After installing my permanent lights on my house, and then adding some more around my garage doors, the combined load of 835 pixel lights blew the 10 amp fuse on my system when I set them to all white. So I decided it was time to upgrade to a Dig Quad. I did some testing and found that my system was capable of drawing 18 amps when all the lights were full bright white. However, the highest draw of any effect I was using was the candy cane effect, which only drew about 13 amps. I had the system running on the Dig Uno with a 15 amp fuse, which is the maximum continuous current my version of the Dig Uno is rated for. You can click on the card in the corner to see that install video. I would like to give a shout out to Michael Lau, a viewer, who pointed out that even though the Dig Uno controller was rated for 15 amps of continuous current, the wires on the LED strings of lights I was using was way, were way too small to safely carry that much current, and a short could create a significant hazard. Thank you so much for your comments. If I was going to keep running my Dig Uno with this setup, I would need to provide fused protection for each power injection point by installing a fused distribution block like the one shown on the screen. In that way, I could protect each of my five injection points from carrying more than the rating of that wire. Fortunately, the Dig Quad has a built-in fused distribution block, so I installed the Dig Quad the very same day it was delivered. In addition to the fuse distribution block, the new Dig Quad controller has some improvements over the Dig Uno. The main reason I ordered the Dig Quad was the higher continuous current rating of 30 amps. With this higher capacity, I can run my lights at full white if I ever choose to. Another great feature I like about the Dig Quad is that I can run two positive and two ground wires from the power supply to the controller. This way, each wire only needs to carry half of the total current. If I max out the current draw of my system at 18 amps, each of the 14 gauge wires only needs to carry 9 amps. Even if I end up adding to my system and draw the maximum of 30 amps, this will not exceed the current rating of my supply wires. There are 7 connection points on the Dig Quad controller, but only 5 fuses. It is important to note that the connections 1 and 2 share a fuse and also connections 3 and 4. I will ensure that each of my 5 power injection wires is protected by a separate fuse. The Dig Quad uses the same ESP32 controller board as the Dig Uno, but with the option for four different data outputs. I will still just be using two. When I ordered the Dig Quad, I ordered it with the external antenna. Since the control box is in the far side of my garage, I wanted to be able to have the best Wi-Fi exposure possible. I unplugged my system and disconnected my old controller. I moved all of the connections to the Dig Quad. I attached the data wires to LED1 and LED2 since they are the same GPIO 16 and 3 as I was using on the Dig Uno. I put ferrules on some of the smaller wires to ensure good connection in the controller. I tried to be very methodical to ensure that all of my positive and ground wires were connected to the correct bus of the controller. I left the second and fourth spots on the positive side unused as they're the ones that share the first two fuses. The negative or ground wires are all connected, so it doesn't really matter which spots you use. Once the wires were all connected, I drilled a hole in the side of the box for the external Wi-Fi antenna. I attached the antenna mount to the box, screwed the antenna onto it, and then pushed the connector onto the ESP32 board. I plugged it in and was ready to go. The Dig Quad comes with WLED installed, so for the initial setup, the ESP32 board starts as a Wi-Fi hotspot. I use my phone to connect to that WLED access point. Once I was logged in, I tap on Wi-Fi settings, I then can type in my SSID and password, and connect the controller to my home Wi-Fi. I actually had to do this a couple of times, as when I typed in the SSN SSID, the autofill of my phone had a trailing space which prevented it from connecting to my Wi-Fi. It took me a few tries to figure that out. Once I had my controller connected to Wi-Fi, the easiest way to find the IP address of the new controller is to use the Discover Lights function in the WLED app. Tap on the plus in the top right corner, tap on Discover Lights, and once the lights have been discovered, tap on the check in the top right. Now that I have the IP address of my lights, I could navigate to the IP on my web browser and complete my setup. On the computer, I typed in the IP address of the controller into the URL bar. Once you are logged in, ensure the PC mode is selected. This mode allows you to see all of the options on the screen at once and is much easier to manage all of the settings. 
For the first setup, I clicked on Config and click on the user interface to change the server description. This makes it easier to identify since I have more than one WLED controller in my home. You can see that on my app that it has the default name of WLED. I will change this to Roofline and click Save. If I refresh my app, you can see that it now shows the new name I saved. I can then click back to return to the main menu. I imported my settings from my Diguno, so let's check a few to see if they imported correctly. You will notice that preset 17 is my off or solid black setting. I'm not sure why the segment for this preset is called odd all, but you can see it only has my roofline lights up to light 535, and not the garage lights which are lights 536 to 835. I can change this end light to 835 and click apply. I can also edit the name of the segment and change it to something more appropriate and click apply. I make sure the segment is selected with the checkbox, ensure my color is selected to black, and choose the solid effect. I can then save this preset again. Once I expand it, I make sure the overwrite with state option is checked and save changes. Note that the message at the bottom of the screen confirms the save. If I click on another preset, you can see that it loads the segment all with it and selects the rainbow effect. This segment is correctly configured with all 835 lights. Another preset has the garage door lights and the roof line lights separated into segments so that they will each run their own version of the chase effect instead of a long, single, continuous set. When I select the BPM All preset, you can see that the save segment bounds are loaded as well as the timing and intensity settings. When I click on the color loop roof line and garage preset, you can see that I have the garage light set up off by one pixel. Not sure why, but your start LED has to be before your actual first LED. I didn't realize this when I first set up the Dig Uno, and this setting leaves the first LED of the string off. It is easy enough to correct by changing the start LED to 535 and applying the change. I make sure both segments are selected, apply the effect again, and then save after checking the overwrite with state pox. If I click on another effect and then back, you can see that the changes have been saved. There are lots of videos of how to program WLED. If you want me to make one as well, let me know in the comments down below and I will make a more in-depth video on how I programmed my lights. I now have my system set up with the new dig quad, all the lights are programmed and it is up and working great. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you are enjoying my content, please make sure that you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. I have lots more videos coming and hope you will enjoy them all. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.